CataractCoach.com. Cataract surgery in an eye with a prior corneal transplant. What should we do differently? So here's the eye. This is a patient who's had a prior corneal transplant, a penetrating keratoplasty for keratoconus that was very advanced. This surgery was done a few years ago. You can see there's the graft tissue. You can see the graft host interface. So we're putting some anesthetic solution in the eye. Step one is we have to accept that this new cornea, this graft tissue is gonna have a weaker endothelial cell count. So very important like this to instill a good quality dispersive viscoelastic to really protect that corneal endothelium. The cell count is lower and you have to very much respect that. Otherwise you're gonna have too low of a cell count and pseudophagic bullous keratopathy. Point two, for our main incision, we need to be away from the graft, so only in the host tissue. Again, nicking the limbal vessels and completely avoiding the graft. Here comes the capsular rexus, and we're gonna try to remove this nucleus using a bare minimum amount of phaco energy and a bare minimum amount of fluid running through the eye. So we're gonna do a phaco chop technique in the capsular bag, but before that, we want to make sure that we've got this nucleus nicely loosened up. So some hydrodissection being carried out here. Again, don't want to prolapse the nucleus. We don't want it in the anterior chamber or even iris plane. We want to keep it away from the corneal endothelium in the capsular bag. So now it's been loosened up enough. Let's recoat the endothelium with the dispersive viscoelastic. And now we're ready for the phaco probe. So here comes the phaco probe going inside the eye. This patient's also a very myopic patient, very long axial length. And in this case, we're going to implant a six diopter IOL. So I'll put the phaco probe in the eye here. We're going to do some chopping right in the capsule bag. And the nucleus removal will be using our standard phaco chop technique in the capsule bag. So buzzing in, chop the nucleus, and we'll get this thing split apart. No problem. Let's cut to the end of the case here removing the last bit of the lens nucleus and maybe a little epinuclear shell there. And again, we're also using lower infusion pressure and therefore lower outflow settings to keep them balanced. And the reason is we don't wanna have that high infusion pressure stressing out the graft host junction of the corneal transplant. Cortex removal here, making nice, uh, nice and complete removal of all the cortex. Take care of that quite nicely. And then we're gonna put the lens in. And again, let's talk about lens calculations. How do you calculate the lens power here? Well, the, the corneal tissue, the graft is a little bit irregular as is expected in most of these cases. And what we wanna do is we wanna look at that central three millimeters of the graft on topography and use the lowest K values to do our lens calcs. On top of that, we're also aiming myopic. So using that, we're aiming to keep this eye at about a minus three refraction post-op. Monofocal lens going in the capsule bag. Here's a three-piece lens. Again, this is a six diopter lens. There could be single piece acrylic lens available in this power. We're opting for the three-piece lens given that it's a large eye, large capsule bag, large white to white. And I think that three-piece lens with the longer haptic overall length will center better. And that looks great. We're going to seal this up here after we take out the viscoelastic. And the other reason why it's good to have the myopic outcome is if you are going to do an advanced treatment later, if you're going to do a PRK on the side, maybe even a LASIK, a myopic ablation is easy. If the patient is going to go back to an RGP contact lens, again, leaving the eye a little myopic is helpful. Now you're noticing here at the end, we're putting a 10 nylon suture in the main incision. I think that's an important step because we want this to be completely sealed. I don't want this incision to leak at all. And sometimes in these eyes that have a cornea transplant, you wanna avoid putting the pressure up too high. You wanna avoid excessive hydration. If you do too much hydration of the incision and you get fluid forcefully being placed between the gr uh, graft and the host, it can separate that. So I'd rather just put a stitch in this eye and then call it uh, at the end of the day. Check the incision. That looks nice and uh, sealed. And let me show you post-op day one.
Here we go. Here's the on-post up day one. Looks great. You can see the picture on the left. Nice, clear draft. And then on the picture on the right, we can see there's a 10 nylon suture still in position. I'd leave the suture in for about a month and then take it out and keep this patient on a strong post-op regimen, including steroids, antibiotics, and NSAIDs, and being particularly careful enough to really reduce that post-op inflammation and just make sure the graft does well during that post-op period. Thank you guys for watching.